Academy is really an astonishing project and, and I recommend all of you to join this project. It's really educational and if you like biology, history, maths, everything, I recommend you. It will raise your grades, I can guarantee you. Now into my presentation. I'm going to talk about astronomy. It's a topic that really interests me. Uh, I must uh, ask you how many of you enjoy watching stars in like a clear night sky. Well, that's uh, not surprising because stars uh, have uh, amazed civilizations uh, long before our age and they still uh, amaze our scientists and they are very mysterious and we talk about what stars are. So stars basically are a hot mass of objects in space where thermonuclear fusion occurs. Thermonuclear fusion is uh, basically when two lighter elements combine and form a heavier element, release energy and neutrons. In this example, there are two isotopes of hydrogen, deuterium and tritium. They fuse together, make helium, that means energy, and that's how stars were. Now, uh, once uh, the fusion creates uh, pressure from the side of the star, and when this pressure is equal to the gravity, the star is stable. When there is no pressure from the side of the core, the star is not stable and may collapse. Stars are classified according to the spectrum, that means their color. The more red star is, the cooler it is, the more blue star is, the hotter it is. And our sun is a G-type star. Now stars' life cycles, just like me, me and you, humans, they become, they are born, they grow up, they become adults, they become old, and they finally die. And the cycle repeats over and over again. And stars are born from these pretty clouds, called nebulas. And uh, nebulas are made of interstellar gas. They contract due to gravity, and the gravity makes a, a heat center, a, a center of pressure, and once and from this heat core, a star forms. Inside this cloud, there, there is a protostar. Protostar is not yet a star because there is no, no thermonuclear fusion yet, but uh, it can become a real star. If a protostar has not sufficient mass, it then becomes cool and becomes a brown hole. If a star has enough mass, it, it, it still contracts more gases and becomes hotter and more pressurized, and it becomes a real star. A real star starts performing this fusion, thermonuclear fusion, and at this time also planets form. This is our solar system for the Earth and all the planets. And a star has three life paths. According to mass, a uh, low mass star chooses one path, a uh, solar mass star chooses a second path, and the uh, high mass star chooses a third path. A low mass star simply fuses its hydrogen into helium, and since it has no more energy, generates no more pressure, and the gravity takes over and contracts the star. A solar type star becomes a red giant. It, isn't, uh, it doesn't stop at helium. From helium, it fuses carbon. And carbon isn't fused anymore and therefore doesn't release any more pressure and the gravity doesn't shut. The carbon core is pressurized and outer layers are blown out into space and this creates very beautiful uh, structures like this. This is called the uh, planetary nebulas. And a massive star on the other hand is not uh, satisfied with only carbon. It fuses neon, oxygen, silicon and finally iron. Once iron, no more energy is released and the star simply collapses because of its own gravity. It cannot withstand its own gravity and it becomes a supernova. Supernovas may become a neutron star or a black hole, again depending on the mass. A neutron star is a very extreme star. It spins around its axis very fast, thousand times a minute. It has very high gravity, has very high magnetical fields, much more high than those of Earth. And a neutron star is so dense that one teaspoon of such star weighs as much as 900 Egyptian pyramids. You would certainly not have this spoon in your teacup. A black hole, on the other hand, is even more massive. It bends space, you may see distant galaxies are dense. It bends light, light it bends space-time. Black holes are still being studied. Uh, if you knew, know the scientist Stephen Hawking, he has made theories about black holes and they are very fascinating objects. And so, to summarize, this is the life cycle, it repeats. And now I'd like to show you a movie about the life cycle of stars, how stars form planets and how...
combining forms of plants. The information we need is here at home. For the simple reason that home harbors the only known examples of life. The laws of physics appear to be the same everywhere. So it follows that the laws of life should be universal too, even if the detail is different. We can use life on Earth as a kind of alien hunter's handbook, a field guide to what life actually is and how it works, no matter where it occurs. Chapter 1, in our particular case, takes us back 4.5 billion years to when the Earth was really quite young. Exactly what triggered life here is still a mystery, but there are several theories. The most common one is that life began purely by accident, in pools of primordial soup, full of chemicals. The science behind dreams, some people don't even consider dreams to be explainable by science, but in fact there is a science called aneurology, and this science studies dreams. It uh, comes from the word aneurys and logia, from the Greek language. So what is a dream? It's basically neural impulses which create visionary, uh, auditory and touch sensations. They may, might also create some, uh, taste and the smell sensations as well. So it creates a little environment where you can act, we can interact with, and it's really amazing. So uh, we don't dream during all of our sleep. During the REM stage, REM stands for rapid eye movement. This means that we move our eyes during the dream stage. And another stage is an REM. We don't dream during the stage, we simply regenerate our energy. This is uh, the sleep cycle. Uh, we can see that after we fall asleep, we go to an REM sleep, and only after 90 minutes of sleep, we start the first cycle of dreams. This story repeats around five or six times, and that means that we drink around five or six times during the night. So, uh, what's the purpose of dreams? Amazingly, scientists have not come to an uh, obvious conclusion. But uh, the most uh, probable theory is that dreams uh, uh, move information from our temporary memory into our long-term memory. Uh, dreams sort what's important and what's not important, so our mind feels refreshed after we wake up and we can start our day. Uh, and the dreams have significant importance in our world. For example, a uh, famous chemist Kekul formed his benzene structure after having a dream inspiration. Einstein, uh, the, the sewing machine, the Beatles song yesterday, Salvador Dali, uh, everyone have, had had inspiration from dreams. A golf player found a new way to hold his stick in the dream, and that significantly increased his performance. So, and another uh, topic I want to talk about is lucid dreams. Have, any, have anyone of you watched the movie Inception? Well, that's great. Uh, in Inception, uh, you can see that there are dreams, and they, they understand the fact that they are dreaming. And this is uh, some kind of conscious dreams. And this is called lucid dreams. The history of lucid dreaming began with Frederick von Eden uh, around 200, 200 years ago. And he uh, coined the term lucid dreaming and wrote about lucid dreams in his books. Modern research, uh, uh, the father of lucid dreaming is Stephen LeBert. He proved the existence of lucid dreams and he uh, made much research. He created the Lucidity Institute. So, uh, but at first, of course, scientists were skeptical. Some of them say that it is impossible to be conscious during the dream state. However, they were proof. The uh, second version made this proof. Uh, you can see that uh, the dreamer can uh, communicate to the external world using his eye movements. These are left right, left right eye movements. And these are the signals that mean I am dreaming. And so, this is the first proof of lucid dreaming. Another proof is a uh, subject was asked to count 10 seconds, do eye movements, estimate 10 seconds, do eye movements again, and repeat this procedure in a lucid dream. And we can see that time uh, in dreams is uh, not really more different than time in the real world. 
So inception is wrong at this point. So another evidence is that we can control our breathing, the lucid breathing. We can uh, breathe rapidly, we can hold our breath, and we are capable of controlling our uh, breathing muscles. Uh, Stephen LaVerge also showed that we can use muscle twitches to communicate to the external world. He used the uh, Morse uh, code to signal S and L, his initials. So even though our body is paralyzed during our dreams, we can still twitch the muscles like that. So Stephen LaVerge created uh, the Lucidian Institute. He wrote a book exploring the world of lucid dreaming. He made even devices which help become lucid. Uh, the Nova Dreamer, it's a mask which signals light impulses in our eyelids and a train of lucid dreaming, the lucid dreamer may recognize the dream state. And there are also many worldwide organizations on dreaming research. Most famous is probably the International Association of the Study of Dreams. This association uh, holds many conferences during the year around the globe. Some of these conferences are online and you can easily participate for a small fee. There are also ways to get there in for free, and I myself participated in one of these conferences last summer, and it's a really uh, astonishing experience to share knowledge about dreaming. So that's it.